Okay, Datsun 240Z, 260Z, 280Z. Turn signal switches, combo switches. It's kind of what I do. I rebuild them. This is video number three or four. I don't know. I can't keep up. I've made a couple today because I'm just trying to kick through all these before I move and get them done. All right, what we got here? Uh, 74 260Z switch. I believe it's a 74. This will also work for a 75 or 76. It's got the long three wire tube, which you can see here. It's kind of long, about 12, 13 inches, something like that. Probably less if you pull these wires down and in. But uh, high beam switch right here. Simple three wire switch because the 260 and 280 have separate turn signal and brake lights as compared to the 240 that has a brake light that also is a turn signal. So this switch has got a lot of problems. It's, it's, it's really stiff. It doesn't like to stay. It's really springy, which we can fix by bending this little spring right here. It's not a big deal. But uh, it's, it's old. It's stiff. It, it's got its problems. Uh, this also has a jumper. What this jumper is, is I'm guessing his high beam, low beam switch is bad. Yeah, it, it's, it's not clicking like it should. It's, it's spring loaded, but it's not. Yeah, it's, it's bad. So he did a jumper from the ground input to the high beam wire. So he always has high beams. He told me to leave it in there. I'll address that later. Probably even call him and tell him I can fix this. But this, is, this part's got to go. All right, so quickly we'll disassemble and uh, go from there. It's pretty simple. A few screws here. Get all your switches in a little pile. As you can tell, I've got more over here. Get all that good. Get that out of the way. All right. This plastic block, if you ship a switch to somebody to have them repair it, unscrew this screw right here. Take off the plastic block, let it hang, because this thing smacks the box and it busts off. So, take that one out. Take that one out. Pop them off, grab screws, throw them in the pile. Take this off. This one's actually got a very good size horn contact. Don't lose this. It'll clean up with a brake cleaner, acetone. Typically, when it comes to these things, Throw them all in a little bucket. Let them soak. Just get some uh, brake cleaner. Let it soak for a little while. Send it to the corner. Pop your uh, pop this little spring plate. This is your return plate. Basically, when you make a turn, it pushes here. Your two pins on your steering wheel come back, and they push on this and cancel out your turn. That way it goes back to neutral. You're not blinking anymore and driving down the road for a mile with your turn signal on like grandma does because she's just doesn't give a shit at her age. All right, so this we're going to clean later. Pop off this spring right here. Pop it off. Throw it in the bucket. Okay, I'm going to take off the switch. One screw, two... Three, four, you can use this with just a regular Phillips screwdriver by hand if you choose. Not a problem. Doesn't matter. I'm just used to doing these. I've noticed some body shops like to only use hand tools and not use power tools when they're putting a car back together after final assembly, after paint. But you get the idea. Push that out of the way. Lift this one up nicely. It might be a little hard because of that. You can push that back and get yourself a little bit more room. It comes out. It's pretty simple. There's that damn word again. All right, that gets you to the screw down here. It all drops out. It's good. Take a screw, put it aside. Take this, set it aside. C-clip. Take it off. Throw it in the bucket. It all needs to be cleaned. It's all, I can feel it. Got sand, grit, dirt, soot. Who knows? Car could have, could have been through a body shop or something. Now, I don't know how well you could tell, but I'm looking straight at this thing, straight on. You can see the handle is bent that way. That's because it sits like this on the car. 
people get in the car, their pant leg or their leg catches it, it bends it down and shoves it way down and it bends this. It is fixable. I'll show you how to do that here in a little while. But for now, while this is still attached and still assembled, we're going to try to get this handle off because you don't want to try to do it when it's just this rod. It's a big pain in the ass. This normally you can grab it, give it a spin. If that doesn't work, here's a little trick. Take your little needle nose, duck bill, whatever you want to call it, put that on there. Carefully if you don't want to scratch the paint, but as you can tell, this paint is shot to shit. So we're going to put it there. Break that loose, because it glues itself to it after a while. I think they put them on with fresh paint, so breaks that loose, it pops off that easy. Ta-da! We're going to clean this later on with uh, just good old-fashioned rubbing alcohol. You can see the goo. This is from people's fingers, or it's just grease and oil from hands and who knows what else guy could be a mechanic but it's dirty it'll come clean gonna throw it on uh, another drill with a Phillips bit on here put it on there and I'm gonna run it through uh, a towel that's soaked in uh, alcohol and just run it clean it after I'm done with that and not burning it I'm going to uh, run some of that uh, Meguiar's Plastex polish it's a plastic polish get this all nice and shiny and clean again you won't know the difference between the old and new all right so that's off we already pulled the c-clip off of that gently put your fingers here because there's two ball bearings in there they're gonna shoot out if you're not holding on to them so just kind of work it up get your finger in there nice and easy let go. There's your ball bearings. They're greasy. They're goopy. Part of the problem this thing was having such a time, you know, to turn. So it's disgusting. Drop them in the bucket. Pull that out. Take the spring. Pull it out. The spring. Pull it out. I'm gonna use a paper towel again. Paper towels are your best friends when it comes to these things. Just wipe off the goopy goo grease. You know the thick stuff. This switch is going to need a lot of extra attention. It's old. It's never been touched. It was slapped together by the Japanese. All right, getting right to it. The same pair of duckbill pliers. You're going to find here, you got a terminal here. A little rod that goes through. It's got a permanent head on it. It's not a Phillips or a flathead. It's just a flat little thing on this side. You're going to see it's got a flat piece to it. They squeeze it to keep it from going through the hole. This is not going to be easy. You want to get that perfectly flat and flush. Get it back in here. Basically, we're going to try to squeeze that. And what happens if it's not dead on, it'll slip out of the way. And it'll make a slip. So, this one actually seems to be working. I'm going to squeeze the crap out of it. And it does that. You don't want that to happen. Use a little bit of teeth on there. Do that. Use a pair of these. Good old channel locks. I'm going to grab on here. I'm going to squeeze here with this hand. And squeeze here with this hand. And try to un-flatten this thing. It's soft steel. <clears throat> but once you do that, it should give you another flat spot in order to get this way into the back where all the real torque is. We can get that going. We can actually get this to straighten up. I don't know if I'll be able to do it without it slipping. Basically, you can do this without cutting the damn thing off and pulling it out. <clears throat> All right, got strong hands. One of the reasons my wife loves me. Good for back rubs. All right, so I've squeezed it, basically squeezed it around. And gotten it to a rounder shape that'll fit through the hole. It's flat and flush now. Take a punch, simple little punch. I just took a tool and I ground it down. It'll slip through that hole. Just use a socket, put it on there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it. Put it on there and pop. Pin those out. Looks like this. Set it aside or throw it in the bucket. You're going to be using it again. 
pull this apart gently. Pull out that. Put it in the bucket. Pull out the spring that's in there. Use your fingernail, just slip it in there. It'll catch on and grow up. All right. Basically, I'm going to wipe this down with acetone to keep all the uh, grease and crap from... Uh... Well, actually, I really need to straighten this one or replace it. I don't know if you can see or not. But this actually has a curve that goes this way. It's curved like that. Doesn't look like much, but it makes a big difference on the outside world. I'm going to vise right here. I'm going to bend this back. I'm just going to gently squeeze this. Just enough on the vise to hold it. I'm going to bend this back, straighten it up. And uh, then I'm going to wipe it down with uh, brake cleaner. Clean it all up. I'm going to hit it with a wire wheel. I'm going to knock all this old paint off. Then I'm going to hit it with some red scotch Bright. And I'm going to put it in my drill here. Put it in the drill. Use the scotch bright, basically. Like that. It's going to come, it's going to be pretty. Be right back. Alright. Straighten it up. I don't know if you can see, but it's much straighter. Much, much better. And hit it with a wire wheel. You can probably still hear it slowing down over there in the background. And I'm going to... Hit it with scotch bright. I probably should use a new pad, but I want to use the crap out of this until it's dead. So, as you can tell, it's kind of meh. It looks alright. I'm going to hit it with this. Yeah, I'm really good at that. It's nice and shiny, nice and clean. It's pretty. All right. You take that. And I'm going to take a clean paper towel. A little bit of brake cleaner. I'm going to wipe off all the grease. Again. Didn't look like it, but it's dirty. Flip it over. Do it again. Make it nice and pretty. Pretty. All right. This is just a regular rod. Came from a door lock actuator. But I just ground it down enough to fit inside this hole. Slips into place. Pound it in. It's just so I can hold it while I'm painting it. All right, I'm going to go hit it with a heat gun. Warm it up a little bit so the paint will stick a little better. Um, one area of concern is this is all scratched up right here, but it's not going to be too noticeable after I'm all done. And as for the paint that I didn't get, the handle will cover that up. And if anything, the thickness will add to holding this on better. All right, be back in a minute. Now, it's all warmed up now. Normally, I would use a uh, metal etching primer. But uh, I don't have any more at the moment, and I haven't had any problems doing it this way, so I'm going to keep doing it this way. Duplicolor. Uh, Semi-gloss black. It's going to come out glossy either way, but semi-gloss. I'm just going to lightly just hold it out. I'm just going to lightly get it that way and just do a nice little simple top coat or just my, my first coat. Just, just to kind of get a little bit on here. Watch for any spots from possible oil or... Or grease but I'm gonna do it very lightly because remember this has to slip back into a piece and the thicker it is the easier it is to chip and the easier it is to break off so let's get that and I'll get back all right first coat I don't know if you can tell or not but it's it's not on there very thick it's just a nice light coat just to see if I got any separation I don't see any oil spots so I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun warm it up and then hit it again all right it's all painted nice and pretty it's all black again hit it with a heat gun it's drying as we speak it's a little tacky but I'm gonna set that aside onto this spot the fun part basically uh, acid brush you can pick them up in uh, bags like this you get like 20 or so Harbor Freight a couple bucks brake cleaner doesn't take a lot 
simple bowl stainless steel like I got here or something up here where it's open I can get to everything. Just basically you just get in there, work all this crap off, knock off all the old grease. You're going to have hardened grease like right here that's just not going to want to come off. Just chip it off because it's been on there for 45 plus years. Right now it's 2018. This switch is from a 74. So the switch is what? 44 years old. Yikes, it's getting up there, so am I. So, knock off all the junk. And you can see here, everything still operating good, but we're gonna throw some crap in there, clean it all up. Don't worry about this thing being pretty. Nobody's gonna see it once you got your steering column cover on. We just wanna get the old grease and junk and dirt off because, well, it hinders performance. So we're just going to knock all this crap off, flip it over, basically we're getting in here, getting into the spring and the functionality of it here. There. This typically has a lot of grease in there, it sits on that, that cap right here on, the, on top of that. So you can knock off some junk here, there's some little hardened stuff here, there, I just saw some more, where'd it go, there we go, right there. That's some hard stuff here. All right, so I'm going to clean this up and I'll get back to you. All right, it's all clean. Set that aside for a minute. Again, I showed it in my other video. But uh, 20 weight. Simple little syringe. These are the ones that you can buy just about anywhere. This is, uh, I think it was for my mom's dog's uh, insulin shots. But you can take this piece at twist off you can buy replacements this is flat it won't hurt you no point 20 weight motor oil just a little bit of here after I blew this all this off with a air gun got all the crap and junk out of there so a little bit in here just enough you can barely see it it's in there work it in there doesn't take much just a little bit I mean it survived all these years without it but now it's gonna last even longer 20 weight oil is 20 weight it's not going anywhere so I'm gonna put some in here and here and here flip it over do the same thing here and here and here on the springs a little bit right here on these springs and on the other side work it work it girl all right that's done set it aside this is your piece of your handle was on I'm gonna try to clean all this junk out of here I'm going to go to all clean, then I'm going to take uh, a socket. This is a, shit, I want to say this is a 9mm socket. The problem with these is this little piece right here. It gets loose. When it gets loose, it's just a pressed in piece. You can see the little indent right there and over here. So basically, we're going to re-indent it. So once this is all clean, I'm going to take this over to the vise. I'm going to set that on just right there in the middle. And I'm going to put that on the on the vise. And then I'm just going to smack it with a hammer a couple times on both sides. Check it. Make sure all this looseness is gone. Don't want to overhit it because you can break this. This is a die cast aluminum. It will break. Could even be an aluminum alloy. I don't know. Probably not. But anyways, get it on there. Pound it flat. Get rid of that wiggle. I'll take care of that stuff and I'll be back. All right, it's good. It's solid. It ain't going anywhere. It's cleaner than it was. But now, the fancy part of my job. This is a secret. This is what has given me an edge over everybody else. Over here to the bench. Let me set this up here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it or not. I'll do my best. Basically, I'm going to use my grinder over here. I'm going to use the uh, grinding wheel. And when you look at these, on the back side, this sits in here into the body, and it pivots this way this way. It's only able to go so far because this right here hits. So I'm going to grind off about 16th of an inch here. From here and just kind of wedge it out. I'll start here and work my way this way and come down to just before this hole. I'm going to take off about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to just going to grind it flat. I'll show you the process here in a minute. 
after I'm done grinding, I'm going to hit it with a wire wheel, clean up all that flashing, get rid of all that crap. I'm going to come along here. I'm going to make this just look beautiful and give it a little bit more of that extra, a little, a sixteenth of an inch here is just a little bit more when you go to turn and you'll find that the ball bearings lock into place better. It's just, just trust me. I'll be back. All right, so I just ground down one side, you can see. It's a little bit shinier. See here how far I went. Seems like I just can't kind of focus on it. So basically, a lot closer to the hole than it was. And you can see over here, it's thicker. It's obviously much thicker. Come over here, it's thinner. So basically, I'm grinding that down, giving myself a little bit more of a turn. I'm going to hit the other side, I'm going to clean it all up with a wire wheel, make it look pretty, and I'll be back. Flashing's gone, it's ground down. You can see there's a little bit more of an edge there now, or less of an edge. Doesn't look like much. It's kind of hard to tell. But uh, there it is. So now, we're going to come back over here. Not put it in the dirty brake cleaner. Set this up here. And hopefully, you can see me again. Alright, so that's good to go. As soon as uh, the paint is dry on the other on the handle. We'll uh, slip it back in there. We'll take that uh, rod and we'll slip it back in. And we'll re-squeeze it. But for now, we're going to take a little bit of this uh, Sil Glide it's from Napa, part number seven six five one three five one. It's a lubricating compound. It's for brakes. It's not melting. It won't melt. Won't freeze. It uh, won't gum up or anything. It's weatherproof, but it works great for these. Synthetic and it works nicely. Use a Q-tip. Get inside that hole. Clean out all the crap. 